like the video and subscribe right now, and the protected doggo will protect your room. Ask Reddit, what are you sad to see become normal practice? People having to leave a company to get a better deal every few years. Just take care of your people, give them what they deserve. This is the same for careers and for services. There's always new customer deals for services, but they don't have the same benefits for their loyal customers. For careers, it is becoming more and more common for people to jump ship from a company to increase their compensation. It's far easier to improve your financial position by getting a new job versus trying to work your way up a single company. This is because company loyalty is a one direction thing nowadays. The company expects you to be loyal, but isn't loyal to you, and will screw you over at the drop of a hat. Take my field for example. The yearly raise is around $80 per month, per year, which isn't bad. But if I jump ship to a different employer they'll give me an extra $200 to $400 right out of the gate. It just doesn't make sense to stick with one company anymore. Oh god yes. I'm watching my opportunities for advancement evaporate before my eyes. My GF just had to find a new job because hers was a dead end as well. Train and promote your people instead of leaving positions vacant for 2 years because you're looking for a candidate with ridiculously specific qualifications. I'm wondering if there will eventually be a new paradigm shift constantly sourcing new talent is not easy or cheap we are certainly at a point where the executives are hoarding for themselves and I hope the people coming up do not follow a similar path. Yes, exactly, in most companies you get hired for a certain position, and then pigeonholed making it impossible to move up in the company, and therefore you leave. It also sucks, when you leave, because you lose all your seniority, vacation etc and have to start over. Requiring 2 years of experience for an entry level position. Also duck 3rd round interviews, if you're not paying more than $12 hour. I'm a teen looking for a job and I've looked and applied to even the most entry level shit like car pushing or bagging, and they will require all this job experience and shit, like how am I supposed to get the job experience to PSH cards around, if you won't even consider me for a job, I can't find any jobs anymore. Edit, PLS guys my inbox. Edit 2, guys PLS my inbox, mon PLS, was going for assistant manager at Panera Bread. They made me drive hours from Orlando to Boca Raton, Florida to some hub store, where they do first round interviews. Okay, sure. Can't be that bad, right? Went there three times, before they decided I wasn't a good fit. Duck your three round interviews, and duck you for making people drive an exorbitant distance, to tell them they might have delegation issues. Raising fund for everything, like GoFundMe, Fundraza, etc. This Australian girl with sus story about carrying 5.8 kilograms of cocaine in Colombia has her family trying to raise $15,000 for their innocent little girl. Oh my god yes. Girl on my Facebook has a GoFundMe, so she can have a graduation party. Like jeez. Bummer, I thought that was going to be shakemyhead.com.au. Ghosting. When I first tried online dating years ago I never had this happen, and after a date or two a simple sorry, I don't think we are a good fit, best of luck or something similar was the norm. Now that I'm back to trying online dating, it's very prevalent to the point of dating someone for over a month, and having them just ghost you. Hasn't happened to me outside of online dating, so maybe it's only normal practice online for now, thankfully. I think ghosting happens because it's also normal for people to completely flip out when rejected, and if you ghost them, they won't have so much of a chance. I think we need to fix both to fix either. I dated a girl for like 2 months, and I was starting to get the feeling that she wasn't that into me because I was making all the effort. So I brought it up one day, and she said no, I don't want you to think that. Okay, I said. The convo kind of died out, and I wanted to see if she was telling the truth. So I decided not to contact her for a couple days, thinking maybe she would reach out. Never heard from her again. Happened to me with a guy I was actually dating. We were in a relationship. Texting constantly for a month plus. Spent time together. Etc etc. Then one day he just never responded. I sent a few messages checking up on him, and letting him know I was a bit worried. No response. 
It really sucked, and had me genuinely worried something had happened. I searched the news for his area, and never found anything about him, so I accepted he ghosted me. A couple of months later I was in a relationship with someone else. I thought about the previous guy. I looked him up, because I did still casually wonder if something did happen. I ended up finding his wife. My heart ducking sank, and I felt sick to my stomach. He used me to cheat on his wife, made loads of promises to me, he obviously had no intention of keeping, then disappeared on me after we got emotionally intimate. I messaged her on Facebook and let her know. She was grateful I told her and bore me no ill will. So lol. Duck that guy. Charging people for the volume of data they download over their internet connection. This is made possible because people treat it as a service like water, power, and gas, where volume is a unit of measure rather than speed of a constantly open pipe that doesn't cost more to do something than nothing. And if net neutrality gets tanked, it's going to get a hell of a lot worse. Edit. Charging money for nothing, that is. Net neutrality doesn't have anything to do with data charges. Sorry I didn't make that clear. Yeah, that sucks. Not too long ago you could buy an unlimited plan and you'd be paying mainly for the speed. Luckily over where I live you still pay mainly for the speed and not the volume. But shifts in mobile plans have me worried that the home line plans might follow. Not being able to let your kids be alone for a few minutes in the car or play alone outside without Bizabod is reporting it instead of talking to the parents first. My dad used to leave me in the car at the supermarket all the time. I hated being inside the store and just wanted to play my Game Boy and sit inside the car. I see a lot of child endangerment cases in US and am baffled at those. Mind you, if the child is in serious or grave harm, the parent must be clearly held responsible for their actions, leaving a child unattended which lead to some accident or mishap. However, if a child is even playing in your backyard and you go to bring something from inside, some busybody has already complained against you. It seems the law is such that it is better for a child to be removed from a loving household and traumatized by that experience than to see how these situations can be mitigated better. People showing up late or cancelling plans at the last moment. It basically started once SMS were cheap enough to send them without thinking about it and when everybody had a phone. Absolutely. Or people who think not answering counts as a polite way of saying no thanks. I'm over here trying to organize this event and I've got a 3% reply ratio. Give me something to work with. Anyone who does this to me with any sort of consistency makes their way into the you're dead to me group. My sister-in-law managed to do this to herself with a lot of her and my wife's mutual friends. You guys hung out with and went to this weekend? I didn't even know about it. That's because people stopped inviting you to stuff because constantly flake out last minute. Companies that honestly expect you to see yourself working there in 5 more years, but won't blink twice when it comes to downsizing to save money when needed. Honestly, I think it's incredibly stupid to see employment one place as a long term option anymore. After a year at one spot, I start looking at other options just in case. My mom and dad think it's the most selfish thing in the world, because they are good to you, they keep a roof over your head. Sure, but they'll also fire me, because I speak out about about calculating bonuses, or lay me off, because an investor pulled out, so why wouldn't I go to other interviews and farm some job offers just in case. It's interesting, there is another post on this thread about how common it is for people to jump ship on careers constantly. It's the natural progression, and it's merely the employee catching up and balancing the system. 40 plus years ago, companies usually employed everyone who worked under them, from janitors to cafeteria staff, to customer service, engineers, etc. Think IBM's requirements. 20 to 40 years ago, companies started realizing that it was more expensive to keep janitors as full-time IBM employees and started replacing them with janitorial contractor companies. They then did this slowly with every department they could until it was almost only essential staff related to what IBM actually does. During this period however, the dominant culture in Minsid was still that of a mutually protected relationship in that the company would take care of you if you took care of it. As more and more departments get axed to save money, that relationship looks shakier and shakier. 
20 years to current, you see that the youngest generations, millennials and Gen Zs have realized that the days of the mutual relationship are over and that companies don't think in the way of cultivating retention over a decadal time scale, so there's no reason the employee should either. Similarly, you can reasonably negotiate a 3-7% to raise each year if you perform well, but you can easily negotiate a 5-20% to raise simply by switching companies, and this is exceptionally true in certain industries like healthcare. It would be nice to live in the world of our parents, where we could find a great company, do the 4 decades, get our watch, and go home with a pension, but those days are long gone. Our generation has to earn that pension by job hopping every 2 years. It's exhausting. People getting their news from single sources on social media, and jumping to the conclusions that suit their worldview. I admit that I've been guilty of that too, and actively detaching from that cycle helped quell my outrage addiction a lot. Tiny edit, some of you have taken me up on my username, you're all welcome to do the same. As long as a news source confirms your opinions it's credible, but as soon as it says something negative about something you believe in, it becomes fake news. Yesterday I had to put the record straight on the Kitty Genovese murder. All because the New York Times, a respected newspaper, decided to go for a fabricated outrage story 50 years ago. It's always been normal practice. And even reliable media have always been unreliable. <laughs> Behaving in an absolutely reprehensible manner in a discussion slash debate, but feel they are justified, because it's just their opinion. Sup, you can express your opinion without being such a bellend. Edit, didn't expect this to blow up. Glad to see some interesting counterpoints as well as alternative approaches to debates. Also, glad people like the use of the word bellend xd. People who treat their opinion as fact are the second worst. The worst are people who have an opinion that is factually wrong, because there is an actual provable fact that nullifies it. Such as, I think that time you played Team Fortress 2 for 2 hours on my computer 5 years ago got me that virus yesterday. <laughs> Televised opposition of every fact of life. I swear, if someone of power states that gravity makes things fall, there will be an anti-gravity movement started. The anti-gravity movement? Don't forget about flat earthers. Shaming people on a huge scale. If you make one wrong misstep heaven forbid someone recorded it on the internet, now you're shamed by several hundred, if not thousands of people, and if it's some random bad mistake you made, they all turn against you forever. Sure, getting trouble and dealing with the repercussions for a few weeks or months for doing something shitty or embarrassing is to be expected I guess, but it shouldn't force kids to switch schools or for people to lose jobs over. Suddenly every move you make has potential to be public and the group mentality can follow you forever. In this age, people can never forget. I wholeheartedly agree. I spent years on Tumblr and I've seen this happen more times than I can count. Some little 13 year old saying some stupid slash insensitive slash embarrassing shit is part of the natural order of things and they will grow out of it eventually. Everyone was embarrassingly stupid at that age. But shit you said at 13 shouldn't completely destroy your life and cause a horde of adults to relentlessly harass you. Kids should be allowed to make mistakes. This also definitely applies to adults. No matter how old you are, you can always grow and learn from your mistakes. But the way things are now, those mistakes will never stop being used against you, even long after you've grown from them, and that's so harmful to everyone. <laughs> Clickbait. The since Lida Shao articles need to be higher in this damn thread. <laughs> you've been visited by the rare doggo of cleaning. This doggo will clean your room, but only if you comment clean well doggo. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe for more daily videos.